Welcome friends to my video review of the 600 watt um, inverter. What I like about it is that it's nice, small and cute. And according to the reviews that it's a pure sine wave. I got this to see that if I could run um, a fridge from it, you know, can it handle the thousand watt peak or whatever peak that my fridge can run? What I did was I'm actually creating Anderson connectors with 10 AWG cables and crimping on my own connectors because I have Anderson connectors everywhere and that's the way they like to do it. Uh, the box, this is the box that it came in and it came with this wire that clips onto the battery terminal and uh, it's a bit thin. However, you're not expecting to run uh, crazy wattages out of it. However, I like that this part is pure copper and this guy is designed for you to run it off no more than 150 watts from your cigarette plug because that otherwise it will blow the fuse in your car so if you're connecting directly to the uh battery you can run up to the 600 watts so after getting the anderson connector i'm going to use this battery over here see these are anderson connectors i'm going to use that battery connected to that and see if it can handle the um surge load and then if i could actually power my fridge directly from a 12 volt battery using this inverter i think that's an interesting test uh of how the unit works uh to see if it could actually handle that because i've had a situation where it couldn't handle it however maybe the connection was different it was a different time so can it can this run a fridge that's my question so this is my current setup i have a ups uh mode UK, okitel it's always connected to the power outlet behind this fridge and i use this to power the thing i've had this off for about 10 minutes and this is the plug that goes to this fridge it's probably a 10 cubic feet fridge um so what is the test the test is can i run this fridge off this uh inverter and the question becomes is like can it handle the spike of the load um to do this so so now we're going to connect these andersons that's what i love about the andersons that it's a beautiful connector that just works perfectly okay so now I'll plug this plug this in let's plug that in okay and now on yeah Yes. Okay. Spike 120 watts. Oh, it's 120 volts. Excuse me. It's showing zero watts that it's asking for. Okay, let's turn this on. So the fridge is on. It's powered up. And it's only taking 12 watts. I guess I guess it's already had enough cold in there. So it is running off the thing. It's not turning off. Um, so, yeah. The fridge is warm. It's working. Initial, um, initial impressions, I mean, it works. Maybe how long? Let's see, what? Volt. Yeah, so. Okay. Oh, so w w when you have the light on, when you have the fridge open, it's taking 12.7 watts, I guess, because of the lights inside the fridge. The compressor hasn't kicked on yet. However, maybe if I leave this on for a little half an hour or an hour, we'll see how this powers it. I'm going to come back for another clip to see if it turned off or if it continues to get working. So the compressor kicked on, it's taking 105 watts. This inverter handled it beautifully. My fridge is running beautifully. All that organic food, all that steak, delicious. Those yogurts are delicious. Everything is delicious. So what is my takeaway here? Well, I like having the additional backup power that I could use using 12 volt batteries easily connected. And what I like about this is that it's portable uh and let's see on this guy over here it looks like the fan isn't even running at the 100 watt load that this fridge is taking 
So 102 watts, no issues whatsoever. Fridge is running, uh, successful test. 12 volt battery, one fridge, uh, power the stuff. I think this fridge takes between one and a half and two kilowatts uh, because from this, uh, it takes a little bit less. However, it might be because also the Okitel power inverter might be more power hungry. It might be taking 20, 30 watts just for uh, running the uh, inverter. This one, apparently idle power is actually about six watts. Let's check the idle power really quick. So that's the idle power that uh, it looks like it's drawing about 6.5 watts when nothing is connected. So let's connect this with it. Let's connect that one. So idle power consumption is 6.5. Oh, I think that might be. I think the battery might be low. Yeah, because either oh or maybe what happened was i might have overloaded the fuse so let's see let's see if uh yeah i think i need to uh change the fuse so the surge voltage uh kicked off the fuse so you need both wires because i have a 40 amp fuse up there no 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 so it looks like uh by connecting just one wire we sent too many amps or inrush current through the fuse. The fuse uh, does the protection for the thing. So that, that's maximum 40 amps. So the inrush current probably was much higher. Um, so now let's turn this on and power this guy on from zero to also the battery might be a little bit low too, 12.36. So, but yeah, the fridge is on, taking 114 watts, and uh, it's putting 285 watts, 300 watts. Yeah, this is not true. I think this is the important information, 120. And it looks like the fan turned on here. So that's a bit of a load for it, 120, oh, it's 120 volts, watts, 18.6. Oh, right now it's only 19 watts. That's kind of strange. So these two cables are paralleled right now. Huh, interesting. So anyways, long story short, fridge is working. You could hear the, you could hear the fridge work. So up here, it's only taking seven watts. And over here, yep, seven watts it is. But you could hear the compressor in the background. It's probably taking a lot more. Oh, maybe the coolant was already moving. Okay, so now it just jumped up. 91 watts, okay. So it can handle a fridge. The most important thing is that we can do a fridge, 46 watts from one, and this one is just connected backwards because the source and the load are backwards over here on this one. So that's why it's not showing the zero watts there. It's probably doing 50 watts from one and 50 watts from another, or 50 and 45, something like that, because it's 90 watts total. There's a t like a 10% conversion efficiency. Uh, the fan is off at this moment, taking the 90 watts. Uh, I mean, so far so good. I mean, it's running my fridge. It probably will run yours too, unless your fridge is like much bigger. However, this is a standard home fridge, probably 10 to 14 cubic feet or something like that. Big freezer, you know, decent size here. Two, three shelves. Um, yeah. So that was good. We, we saw the idle power consumption. We saw that it could actually power this um, this fridge. And this might be a cheaper than a power station because technically it just depends. Like 70 bucks for this guy plus another like 250, 300. For 300, you could have 1.2 kilowatts. 
However, if you're buying a power station with everything built in already, uh, that might be a little bit more. So, yeah, I mean, so far so good. So let's see if this unit can handle a gaming computer with a TV and stuff like that. Uh, maybe I'll even put it through the tests, turn it on. I just turned on the TV, turn on the computer. So I just put on Furmark and that just made the computer restart. Furmark is too much for it. It just said OL and it does kind of smell a little bit. It's probably fine electronics so it overloaded and shut off and shut turned back right on so that is kind of noisy oh now that it reset itself So now I'm putting the computer on. It's taking 120 watts without an issue. Uh, mind you, Firmwork actually stressed the GPU. This GPU, I think, can take up to three, 400 watts. And it has an 800 watt power supply. So possibly there might have been an 800 watt spike from the Firmwork, uh, from the GPU for the Firmwork. So mind you, this is not for a gaming computer. For a gaming computer, you want this bad boy over here, that pure sine wave inverter. That's the one that can handle that kind of power. However, size wise, that one's probably five, 10 times bigger. So uh, portability wise, so that's, that's the fan, that's with the fan on. The fan is a little bit noisy at 116 watts. So playing the, this 4K video clip from YouTube, uh, the fan noise, that's a little bit unbearable, I gotta say. And we're at only 120 watts, is that correct? On this end, it says 94 and 92. So we're probably more at 180. 180 watts. Oh, that's what it is. 260 270 okay so that's a 270 i was looking at the 120 which it keeps resetting itself to uh volts instead of that so my question to you is can you handle this the sound of this inverter running this loud when it's doing 250 watts perhaps that's okay mm. still it is a little bit stinky. Hmm. I'm just wondering, what do you guys think? I mean, for a low, low inverter demand item, it's kind of nice portability wise. However, it can run a fridge. The fridge, the fan didn't even turn on. So what's the use case for this guy? Probably to run a fridge uh, at not, not over, um, not over that 100 watt mark so that the fan doesn't turn on so that we're jumping between 100 213 uh so 200 watt load we're looking at 100 no it's actually a two 260 280 watt load we're looking at huh perhaps if you connect the laptop to it that's okay Perhaps if you connect a fridge to it, that's okay. Um, I mean, it could technically get you by. I wouldn't even try a laser printer. Um, so what is it for? I think it's good for fridge power, for off-grid fridge power setup. Just put one of these guys and have it power your fridge with a six watt standby. 
However, at that situation, you might as well get the 4,000 watt inverter because if you're in the kitchen, you might want uh, several appliances like a coffee maker. Um, so just spend the 250 extra bucks and get a 4,000 watt inverter. The benefit though, is that it's extremely small. We're talking about about nine inches this way and about four and a half, four and a quarter this way by two, two and a quarter this way. That's kind of tiny. I like that because I've seen inverters much bigger. All right, friends, what do you think? Should it, like, it's probably a new piece of electronic. It does have a little bit of that plasticky smell. And a 250 watt load, this is the sound that it's making. The, the cell phone is uh, next to my head. So that's where my ears technically would be if you're like a foot or two away from it. Um, if it's in your kitchen, you probably wouldn't be bothered by it because uh, the noise of the fridge being powered would do it. So uh, thumbs up for, the, for being able to power the fridge. Thumbs up for the low um, idle draw. Thumbs up for the size. Thumbs up for it being able to power a fridge so that's the, the high load. We saw that it was probably a current of over 40 amps DC in order to kick the uh, starter on because with one... Uh, with one wire, it did blow a fuse, a 40 amp fuse. So it was definitely 40. And now that I put the computer to sleep and it's powering minimally, like 10 watts, because it's just computer on idle mode, um, the fan turned off very quickly. So probably past 100 watts, this unit does um, kick on the fan and it's up to you to decide with it. I mean, the unit is reasonably inexpensive. And one of the reasons I bought it also is that I saw in the review a person doing a sine wave test with it. So it does uh, pure sine wave. So uh, your electronics should be safe with it, more or less. Hopefully, you know, it, you know, somebody did a test. I saw a picture of it. Um, Price-wise, it's very reasonable. Portability-wise, it's nice. Uh, the cables, you're gonna, obviously going to have to make your own. And I like to over gauge the cables then do it because these these uh, 10 EWG cables can carry 30 amps each and I'm thinking 600 watts 30 amps 60 60 amps that's uh, six or 700 watts without an issue with these Anderson connectors otherwise you would need a bigger one this one can do 300 amps that's what my uh, big inverter down there that, that you saw is so what do you guys think thumb up if you like the video Thumb up if you like. Uh, if you have any requests, put put any comments down. Let's have a discussion below. What do you think about it? Uh, should someone keep this? Um, and full disclosure, I bought this with my own money. Nobody sponsored me. I just decided to have an inverter. Possibly, hey, I have a 12 volt battery. Uh, maybe I want to power my fridge for a little while. Um, and sometimes it's easier to just deal with a 12 volt battery and have this kind of like a port portability wise. So I see the benefit of this guy is maybe for um, having a portable like charger pack, uh, connect like four Dewalt battery chargers to it, or recharge a power to a battery, stuff like that. Because most of the time, probably you are not gonna use 100, more than 100 watts usually anyway. And I like that it's completely silent when it's, um, you know, low idle draw, like this 10 watts or up to 100 watts. We didn't even hear, hear the fan turn on uh, running the fridge for like 10 15 minutes or whatever however long that was um so overall it's um seven out of ten i mean it could have been a 10 out of 10 if the fan wasn't so noisy that's that i subtracted three points for that they should have definitely thought about maybe like a better cooling solution or put a better fan in there not something so noisy however maybe it's a nitpick because you know at the lower capacity the, the fan is not running so all right, friends, I'll see you in the next one. It's a link down below. It's an Amazon affiliate link. Uh, doesn't cost you anything. However, um, you could support the channel that way. And I'll see you in the next one. Check out my other videos too. Bye.